Good evening from Hawthorne, California. It is December 22nd, just after 5.12 p.m. Pacific Time. Welcome to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission, carrying the fourth flight of 10 Iridium Next satellites. You're seeing the live view of Falcon 9 as we prepare for launch in just over 10 minutes, sunset just having occurred here on the west coast of the United States. Launch is scheduled for one hour, 27 minutes, 34 seconds universal time, or 5, 27, 34 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer, and I will be bringing you coverage of the SpaceX launch for Iridium Next during today's webcast. Now this is our fourth of eight planned launches for Iridium. It's also our fourth Iridium flight in 2017. We started in January with Iridium 1, and we're wrapping up 2017 with Iridium 4. We're T minus 12 minutes 48 seconds counting down. As you just saw from the video tour, we're launching from historic Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, where I worked for several years while I was in the Air Force. Slick 4, as it's called, is SpaceX's West Coast launch site. On the launch pad, you can see the two stage Falcon 9 vehicle. It stands just over 70 meters tall. That's taller than a 20 story building. It's in the darkness just after sunset. Now the first stage provides the initial force to get out of the majority of the Earth's atmosphere. The first stage in the close-ups is the stage that has the SpaceX logo on it. For that first yeah. stage, this will be its second flight, the first having been on the Iridium-2 mission earlier this summer. Now what you may have noticed in our camera views is the first stage does not have landing legs for this flight, although grid fins are installed. SpaceX does not plan to recover this first stage. A landing sequence out in the Pacific Ocean will be performed, but there is no drone ship in position for recovery. SpaceX will not be following the first stage during the webcast, although you may hear callouts on the countdown net while we are following the second stage as it goes into orbit. Also of note, you may notice the inner stage looks slightly dark, sooty from the last flight, and it is. There was no need after it was recovered to totally clean and repaint that inner stage. Now on top of the first stage is the second stage. That will take the satellite from the stage separation altitude of just over 70 kilometers at the edge of space and accelerate it up to the orbital speed of just over seven and a half kilometers per second, or about 17,500 miles per hour, 10 times faster than a bullet. Finally there in the view, you can see with the Iridium Next logo at the very top, the 17 foot diameter payload fairing inside of which are 10 Iridium satellites. And then finally, the large white structure next to the rocket is our transporter rector. As a reminder, unlike the East Coast, here on the West Coast, the transporter rector will move away starting at about T minus five minutes to a position 70, 77 and a half degrees away from the rocket just before T zero. T minus 10 minutes, we're counting down. Launch again planned at 27 minutes, 34 seconds after the hour. Currently on the Falcon 9, the good news is the SpaceX team is working no significant issues. We began loading fuel into the first stage on time at T minus 70 minutes. Fuel is now essentially loaded on the first stage. We'll top it off with just a little bit from about T minus seven minutes to T minus six minutes, and that'll finish the first stage fuel. 
We are loading liquid oxygen onto both stages. Stage one is about 80 some percent complete. Stage two is a little more than half full. That liquid oxygen loading will continue up until the last minutes of the countdown. First stage completing at about T minus three minutes. Second stage locks loading will complete about T minus two minutes. You should hear those countdowns over the countdown net as we listen to the last minutes. Now right now the next major activity planned is in two minutes at T minus seven. That'll be the opening of the pre-valves between the first stage propellant tanks and the nine Merlin 1D engines at the bottom of the first stage. That'll allow liquid oxygen to bleed through the turbo pumps, begin chilling them down to prepare them for the ignition that it comes just a couple seconds before T0. On top of the Falcon 9, shown within again, the, set, the, the payload fairing with the Iridium Next logo on it are the 10 Iridium satellites. The Iridium team working no issues. They have gone to internal power and they are ready for launch. Today for the range, we're operating out of Vandenberg, the head of the Western range. Everything looks good from the Air Force. Support is in place, ready for an on-time launch. And then finally, the weather. The good news is we don't have to do anything about the weather. The Air Force weather officer has given us a 0% probability of violating conditions. Upper altitude jet stream looks like it's in control. Ground level winds, as you can see, are very light. We're hardly blowing any of the mist away from the rocket. The cold moisture condensing from the chill of the liquid oxygen in the stages. So at 7 minutes 54 seconds, everything is looking good. Now today, SpaceX is launching 10 Iridium Next satellites to LEO, that's short for Low Earth Orbit. Now each of the 10 satellites has a mass of about 600 kilograms, and it's got solar rays that are currently folded up alongside each satellite. Once they're in space, the solar rays will fully deploy, and the Iridium Next satellite will have a wingspan of approximately 9 meters in length. Now in order to correctly position the satellites into the right orbital plane, that means we have to launch right on time today. Our launch window is one second long. Now if you hear the dreaded hold, hold, hold in the countdown, that means we're going to have to recycle and try again another day. There is a backup opportunity tomorrow, about six minutes later. Finally, when the second stage gets into the final orbit later this evening, we'll be at 625 kilometers altitude. From there, we'll release the 10 Iridium satellites. They will make the maneuvers to their final orbits. some of the unique features of the Iridium system. When we were envisioning Iridium Next, a whole constellation of 66 new satellites going around the Earth to replace our network, we realized what an incredible real estate this is. This is really, really important real estate to be so close to the Earth with the network all interconnected in space. What if other sensors could be put on our satellites? What if other things that really wanted to see the Earth as a complete entity could also be on the satellite with us? We decided to put a payload about this big to monitor aircraft. And it operates completely independently of our communication system. It doesn't use the same radio frequencies or anything, but what it's doing is listening for the transmissions of every aircraft in the world, all of whom are broadcast at a very specific frequency in a very specific language called ADSB. Their identity, their location, their speed, their position, their altitude, and while ground towers typically pick up those receptions, we knew that we were so close to the <coughs> Earth, and with an interconnected satellite system, we could hear those transmissions and relay them in real time to an air traffic controller. 
and that would allow airplanes to fly much more efficiently point to point. They'd be able to climb faster. They'd be able to fly in places where there was no radar coverage today, but fly just as safely and as efficiently as they do when they were in radar coverage. Every one of our new satellites has one of these receivers on them. In fact, they're processing billions of messages a day already from airplanes. And when the full network is complete, that is going to provide a 100% picture of the real-time location of every airplane on the planet. And it's exciting because we've created this whole new business that isn't even related to our core communication competency by using this hosted payload, as it's called. We also had the company that created this payload put a few other things in there, including the ability to monitor all ships in real time. And that's quite exciting. Today, we pick up large ships as they're traveling around the world, they can be out of touch and out of reach. And so for the first time ever, there'll be a 100% picture of every ship in the ocean, picking up the unique frequencies transmitted by every ship as it's trying to send out uh, its information to nearby ships. But we'll pick it up as we pass overhead and relay <coughs> that to the agencies, the Coast Guards, the Ducks. maritime organizations that really want to know in real time where every large PTM. ship is traveling in the world for safety and security. And that's exciting. It's a whole new business that just rides along with our communication payload and really creates a whole new technical innovation, a whole new business around our business that expands the power and potential of this unique global constellation of satellites. T-minus two minutes, 40 seconds, continuing to count down for a launch. Everything looks good. While we're watching that video, the team has moved the Strongback away from the Falcon 9. We've done thrust vector control checkouts on the upper stage engine. We've done alignment of the guidance system. We've completed <coughs> fuel loading on first and second stage, and we have just ended locks loading on stage one. So we're down to loading locks on stage two, then we'll go into the final countdown sequence starting at T-minus one minute. Now one note coming up at about 90 seconds, if you see and hear a large venting off of the strongback, that's normal. We'll be draining liquid oxygen out of the structure alongside of the rocket, and sometimes that'll condense a lot of the moisture in the air at Vandenberg into a cloud. But for that, Iridium is go. The range has just announced they're green. The weather is go. So we're gonna listen in to the last minute and 45 of the countdown of Falcon 9 with Iridium next. Vehicles in South Point. Vehicle gas closeouts have started. AFTS is ready for launch. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 2 tanks pressing for flight. LD is go for launch. Minus 30 seconds. Twenty. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Lift off, drop the tower. Vehicles clear the tower. Hit our propulsion pump. 
to be tweet on one Saturday. a minute 10 in the flight. We've just gone through throttle down and throttle back up of the Falcon 9 first stage engines. We've gone through the first stage. First stage continues to look good on the engines. Headed down range away from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Chilling in the MVAC engine two minutes into flight, getting it ready for ignition. Next major event coming up in 30 seconds is shutdown of the nine first stage engines, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. Shortly after that, we hope to get a view of payload fairing separation from the second stage. We've had successful separation and ignition of the upper stage engine. First words from propulsion, things look good on the upper stage engine and the second stage. Good Next up we should down. see fairing separation. Hear the applause from the team gathered around Mission Control Center here in Hawthorne. It's 5.30 in the evening, second shift is in. They're watching the flight. Fairing separation looked very good, exposing the 10 Iridium X satellites to the vacuum of outer space. We're three and a half minutes plus into flight. Second stage performance continues to look excellent. Plus four minutes into flight. Falcon 9 second stage continues to perform nominally. Power on the engine looks good. Avionics looks good. Guidance looks we're on track. Headed south away from California. Eventually overflying the South Polar Cap on our way off of Eastern Africa where we'll eventually deploy later in the webcast the 10 Iridium Next satellites. T plus five minutes into flight, you can see the camera views looking back on the nozzle of the MVAC-D Merlin vacuum engine. Red hot, which is just what we expect at this stage of flight. The engine is at full power, continuing to perform normally, as I like to say. And meanwhile, the second stage is on trajectory 
headed for its initial low Earth parking orbit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but for now, everything continues to look good. Plus six minutes into flight, Falcon 9, second stage carrying 10 Iridium X satellites, is currently west and south of the tip of Baja, California. I hope that everybody in Southern California had a great view of the launch this evening. We've had clear skies, the rocket launching about half an hour after sunset. Now, currently, we're in burn one. This takes us into the low Earth parking orbit. That's a temporary orbit that we'll be in for about half an orbit around the Earth before we relight the upper stage engine and that will move us with its second burn into the final orbit. We'll be bringing you that second burn later on in the webcast. Stage one entry startup. 